my 17th season as a pro. Wow. And who have you ridden for during that time? First, I started in, in Fornak. It was yep. a Swiss team. Then I went to long time BMC. I was racing for KD 11s. How long for BMC? Uh, 11 years. Wow. Yeah, 11 years. It was a nice time. The BMC racing team. We did a lot of races internationally. Cadell with Greg van Avermaet, with Phil Schilbert, George Hinkapie, which was a big mentor for me. It was good times. And now I changed to Agile Desert, French team. Still racing for Greg. We actually stayed together over all the years. We were roommates for many, many over, yeah, over 10, 12 years. And there came other new, new leaders for the GC into the group, which is Ben O'Connor, was fourth in the Tour de France, the Australian. And yeah, nice to be racing for those big leaders. Absolutely. So what's your role within the teams that you've... It was all the years the same role. I'm a domestic rider, yep. just riding for the, the GC guys and also for the classic guys. I'm a bit diverse. I can get used to the, the classics to make approaches for important cobble sections or little climbs. But also I'm quite light for my, t for my size, so I could pass over big, big uh, passes and big climbs pretty well. So I can do also like Grand Tours, so I did a couple Tour de France's. Wow. And you say your size, how tall are you? One meter 96. Wow. Six foot five. Six foot five. Yeah. And how much do you weigh? 77 kilos. 77 kilos. Yeah. Wow. So we were talking about training earlier and you were saying how much it's changed over the years. So when you first started to become more professional, what, what year are we talking? Yeah, I was 2006 starting being professional. Okay. Then the sport was very different. It was more, you trained from home. You had okay. a home trainer that gave you the, the training and you just did actually just long hours. It was all about volume. Yeah, okay. it was really volume, volume. We did the longer the ride, the better it was considered. Okay. It means we did five hours, six hours, seven hours. The 200K day was, it was always a good day. Right. And mostly if you arrived empty and tired and the, the, more, the more fatigue you could accumulate, the better the training was for us supposed to be. That was the mindset right. of the old pros. And you, you were telling me earlier about the um, nutrition intake as well. This is a lot different then. What, what happened? Yeah, there was a big, big change. At the beginning, we, we just went out mostly not small breakfast or even empty. We did uh, low carb rides a lot, which is not done at all anymore nowadays. So we went out, let's say for a five hours ride, two and a half hours in, no food, no, yeah, maybe a bottle with a little bit of syrup inside. <laughs> and then we stopped at the bakery, we just took a Coca-Cola or a coffee and a big croissant or something, some pastry, and just spiked the sugar again, yeah. totally, to sprint out of the coffee again. <laughs> <laughs> so, we had lots of fun doing that, yeah. you know, it was fun training. Yes. We did. We so never there, was no, there was no structure, you just went and did whatever? Yeah. Okay. We did whatever. We did, like we grew up as juniors, you know, you, like if you had no training, what do you do? You go to a hill, you test yourself, you go full up the hill. So yes. that was fun. Yes. So if you have two, three guys and you start dropping him or start having tactical games against each other, it's, it's a lot of fun. Right. We sprint to a sign of a village and this has totally changed. Wow. Now you do sprints, yes, yeah. but you do 10 sprints and the trainer puts on your, even on your Garmin, the section where you do the sprint and you, you do it just randomly on a straight road. Yeah. So there is no goal, there is no village sign, there is no, no fun to it. It's yes. just like robots yes. putting one and then two minutes exact recovery, next sprint, two minutes recovery, next sprint. So before it was maybe five and a half minutes recovery or, or 30 seconds only. So it was more random. random. Yeah, okay. And did you have power meters when you first started to get into training? Yeah. No, into training not. Like when I really started, no power meters. But it was about the time, 2007, 6, 7, where the power meter SRM arrived. Yeah, okay. We had it. We also had training peaks already. So okay. that's actually quite nice. I can look back all my history. Yes. Because I had a login since 2006 to training peaks. Wow. And I do this mostly because a lot of the values of the watts, you cannot really compare. It's more about the comments I wrote. So I go back to Paris Roubaix 2007 and read my comments. It's super interesting to see now still my, you know, my analysis of these races to implement into the, the races nowadays. Yes. So what did you analyze when you see it? 
are pretty precise there. I really say which cobblestone or which little corner, which little church you have to look at. It's more tactical thing. It's okay. not a training thing, just to see where you make the best approach. And that's how I evolve or try to improve myself year by year. Yes. So going back to the training when you first started, was it this common for most cyclists? Yeah, there were some cyclists who really were heart rate based. Yeah. They they did a lot on the heart rate. Yeah. There were there were some guys they did on on speed. Mm. The Belgians they always have to come home on a thirty three average speed in training. Yeah. Which is fun. And the watt based training, I would say around two thousand ten, eleven, really came came more and more important. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when did you notice? the shift starting to happen from random volume into more structure? Has it been just recently or was it a while ago? It, the first shift, I would say, was like five to eight years ago. Right. Where the newer generation came up that we really structured on, on, on the watts. We were, we were not training anymore together. Each rider had his personalized profile, uh, training plan. So every guy went alone you, because he can't do it together the same. Even in the team? Yeah, yeah, oh, and the team training camps is together. Okay. There they'd really try to make groups of eight to ten riders together. But yeah. at home, like my group of training buddies, oftentimes we called in the morning and then we like, ah, it's too big of a hassle to go out together because you got to do three times 20 minutes and then when I have to do a sprint day and you have a rest day. So it was a bit, there I started to drift apart right. as soon as we were riding individually. Mm. Then the second big drift was COVID. Like since COVID, I think training has changed totally. Really? Because the, the indoor racing came. A lot of, you know, digital Swiss five. We had this indoor tour de Swiss. Yeah. And the young generation, they just jumped onto that tr the train of indoor cycling so much and pushed themselves really on the limit of this, these races. And also the trainers, they, they saw this has potential and they put a lot of, of training. Since then, definitely, the bunch has changed and we, a lot of my teammates, we analyze that oftentimes on the dinner tables that we say since this infamous tour of Dauphiné 2020 was one of the first races back which we were just flying. Like we came in and we raced full full. It was just from the start, there was no pit stop anymore. We go out and we just race. It was and bang bang. Yeah, it was bang bang. Yeah. And that has changed a lot and yeah, I think... It, so it's made people stronger? Yeah, we are stronger for a shorter time, you know, we are more, every race, we're looking at it as a competition that counts. Before right. we had, I had building up races, I did a little bit Valencia, a little bit preparing races for the classic, you know, small stuff where I had no pressure, nothing, that doesn't happen anymore. Because before I had, before COVID, I had 90, 98 race days a year. Now, this year, I had 58 race days. So it's a lot less. Yes. And that means a lot less race days is a lot less, a lot more pressure on that actual day. You're much more prepared. So everybody's more prepared. The lift, the level is higher. Yes. Also the kilometers a year. My normal years was 37,000 kilometers a year. And this year I did only 27,000. That so means 10,000 less is almost 30% less. You know, wow. that means Every training is more structured and more precise. So I go out now, I go sometimes two and a half, three hours. 10 years ago, I would not put my bibs on for two and a half hours training. You know, it was not even, it was a little, little bit of a rest day, right? Yes. And now these two and a half hours are full, full on. I go out after 10 minutes, I push my set button and I do repeated efforts. Like last time I texted Greg before Canada and I told Greg, you don't believe me what happened. I'm now 36 years old and it's the first time I had to stop and jump off my bike because I was that much dead. I was, you know, the effort of the training was so hard that I did like six times two minutes with two minutes recovery. Yeah. But this, after the sixth time of the two minutes full out, I don't know, six, seven hundred watts or something, I just collapsed. And I said, fuck, this never happened before. Before we just, you know, we just rode. So when you train hard now, you train harder. Yeah. Yeah. It's polarized. That's the other part that has changed. And yes. Polarized. We go either all out or we go endurance easy. Right. The easier than we know. Because the old style of pros, you go out and you put a, you know, put the 300, 350 watts the whole day. You just ride and ride and drag and drag and the stronger you get, the bigger the engine gets. Mm. That was the idea. And now 
our trainers always have to put us back. They say, guys, go easier. Don't go those 300 watts to all day long. Go 150 to 250, you know, go easy. Just cruise for six hours and come home and don't be totally empty on a hunger flat. You know how many times I'm living on a little hill? I always came home hunger flat, like totally out of sugar. Sometimes I, I creeped up home. Now, since two, three years, I eat like I have to eat in a you know, proper strategy of food. You, you were saying before, having a gel in the first hour. You never used to do that. No way. <laughs> a gel in training, this was a shame. If, really? If, if a Neopro took a gel in training, the whole group laughed. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. What and about now, now? Now everybody orders the gels at home and we eat the gels the whole day. Right. It, wow. Unbelievable. Yeah, changed a lot. Yes. And you were talking earlier about the, the juniors or the... the more elite pros seem to be getting younger. Why do you think that is? Because of the training? Yeah, they're younger and earlier ready to be pro. Because when I was pro, I was also early pro. I was 19 years old in a time where it was different. So I, I was getting pro and I knew nothing about the world of being pro. I didn't know about nutrition, about training, about anything. I was just getting, I got dropped in the cold water. Do you have a coach? I had a coach, yeah. It was my father. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know? Right. It was not that old coach. school. Old it was school. Old school, going yeah. riding and just going as hard as you can. Yeah. But now the young guys, they're so ready to be pro because they live, since in Europe it's like this, they go to sports schools. And when I was school, young, I had no sports school option. Mm. I was going to a normal, proper school till 4 30 and then run home as fast as possible, went on the bike one and a half hours, all out, came home, slept the next day, school. And the young boys now, they go to the sport universities, the sports schools, so the, the afternoon is mostly free for training. Wow. So they and have, this is across Europe, you were saying, these I schools? I was really, yeah, yeah. I know my French teammates all did it. The Belgians there, to be honest, not even in sports school, they're professionals. <laughs> 15, they do nothing in school. Wow. It's really, it's shocking. In Swiss, we also have a lot of good sports schools where the, the boys have good education and they, they do something well. But that means, they have nutrition in, in the school, they have training science, they have training space for the proper training, they have core training, they have the whole package. So they are professional, my point of view, already with earlier, with 15. So that means when the jump to the pros is, is way easier. And how long has this been there for? Like the last three to five years it's been like? That's a bit longer, yeah. I think bit longer. the sports course is, is around five, eight years. Yeah, okay. At this point. And the training they're doing is more of this structured training, less volume, yeah. more zone two, more high intensity interval training session. Exactly. Yes. The young guys, they, they know a lot of how their body has to react on the certain high intensity training, because that's actually what we need, you know. Cycle, yeah, road cycling is, is often one, two hours hard at the start to have a breakaway. Then we, we go for two, three hours in regular pace, and then the end you go again super hard. So that means you need to, to train the spikes and you need to train the repeated effort. So what I meant before, if you have super values, like once riding up a hill for 20 minutes or 10 minutes, that's, that's quite easy. The issue is if you have to go after five or six hours or in Milan San Remo, after 300 Ks, you have to do the 10 minutes effort on the same level like you did at the start. Yes. And there you see the differences in, in talent and in training also. Um, so do you prefer it this way? Or do oh, you prefer it the old school <coughs> way? I'm happy how it is. I'm happy I've seen both sides. Okay. Because I'm, I'm in a stage of my career where it's, you know, I'm a bit older. It's fine to, to test myself. I see it in a positive approach. I see, right. I can test now my body where I actually can go to the absolute maximum. So it's nice. Now I have the better values than when I was 22. You do? Yeah. Right. Because so, I, so the training has worked. Exactly. Okay. Training worked and I cannot retire and say I have a regret. I didn't put everything out of my body. Mm. So I will retire and say, wow, I did the best of my absolute, absolute capacities yes. with the, the leak or the lack of fun. Because the fun has been missing. In the old days, I had more fun. So I can say I had to see, I've seen both sides. Yes. So I had my early years when I was 20 to 30 with lots of fun, but less structure and also less performance. Now I have less fun, but more structure. So I'm having, you know, I see it in this. You're married way. with kids now, so it's okay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But what, what about then to flip the coin, the training is more effective 
but is it more of a burden for some cyclists that might uh, mentally find it hard? Do you, do you think more cyclists might get burnt out because of the structure or? That's what, yeah, that's what lots of people say now that the careers will not last. Have you seen it? I've seen lots of people come and go, yeah. Right. I've seen uh, in the sport, you know, some guys, they come to two year contracts, they come in and come out. It's, it's, it's a rough, rough business. Yes. You either you come and perform or there are a thousand other boys waiting for your spot. Yes. So that's not so easy. Is that training related though, or just the cutthroat mm, nature? No, that's the business. That okay. was always the same. Yeah. I think training related, we will only see in a couple of years because this generation who came up with, who was that, you know, who's training that, that crazy and that focused is not, yeah, we need a couple more years to, to see this, the science behind. And I don't, I don't want to go like this because a lot of people say the younger pros, they will have lo shorter careers. Because I have now a 17 year career, they say this never happens anymore in the future. Mm. I don't think so. I think if a boy has, has a passion for a sport and he loves his, his, his business, he can go on for a long time. Mm. Can, if you find your, you know, your happiness. Yeah, absolutely. So can we finish off? What's your favorite training session? You got two favorite training sessions, low intensity and high intensity? <laughs> the low, the just when he rides endurance, go as long as, as 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 fast as you want then i go on my favorite two climbs yes which is in my home it's a five hour loop with two one hour climbs spectacular views yes when i just go out as like a tourist and I just enjoy the views yes and that's how i i think i will ride for many many more years yes great well thanks for your time and thanks for sharing thank you